Right, so in this video we want to have a look at some problems that involve making use of function notation. Um, so this follows quite nicely from the video on functions where we introduced uh, function notation. Um, so we're just going to work through some examples here. So the first example asks us to find a linear function called f such that f of 1 is equal to 5 and f of negative 2 is equal to negative 1. Okay, so a couple of things to think about here. So we have a linear function and it's called f. So in a linear function, we have mx plus c. That's the general form for all linear, linear functions. Obviously we can rearrange things in slightly different ways, but every linear function can be written in that way. And so we're gonna start with that general form. Now we've been given two pieces of information and a linear function has two unknown coefficients, m and c. So we know that f of 1, which will be m times 1 plus c, is going to equal 5. Okay, so we know that m plus c equals 5. All right, so there's an equation involving m and c. We also know that f of negative 2, which means m times negative 2 plus c, is equal to negative 1. And so that means that we get negative 2m plus c equals negative 1. So we have two equations here, equation 1 and equation 2. We're going to solve them simultaneously. Now we've got c is the same term in both equations, so we can simply subtract these to eliminate c. So I'm going to do equation 1, take away equation 2, and we get m minus minus 2m, so that's 3m. c minus c, they eliminate, that's the point, and 5 minus minus 1, so that is 6. And so m equals 6 divided by 3, which is 2. And then obviously we can substitute back into either equation to find the value of c. So I'm going to go back into equation 1, which is a simpler equation. We know that m plus c equals 5 and m is 2, and so therefore c must equal 3. And so therefore our function, which is called f, it's in terms of x, so it's f of x, is equal to 2x plus 3. So that is a function that uh, we're such that f of 1 is equal to 5 and f of negative 2 is equal to negative 1. Essentially what we've been given in these two bits of information is two points. We're being told when x equals 1, y equals 5 and when x equals negative 2, y equals negative 1. And we've subbed those two points into our equations, come up with two simultaneous equations, solved to find m and c and therefore been able to come up with the linear function. Okay, example 2. Find the quadratic function g such that g of 0 is equal to g of 6, which is equal to 0, and negative 3 is the smallest value of g. Okay, so let's think a bit about what we're being told here. So quadratic function, so we know there's a few different general forms we can use for a quadratic turning point form or factorised form or um, just general form, ax squared plus bx plus c. So we want to think a bit about the information we've got to make a decision about which form is going to be most helpful here. So we've got a quadratic function, negative 3 is the smallest value. So that's the y value of the turning point. Okay. Now the other thing we know is that g of 0 is equal to 0. So that means we go through the point 0, 0. And g of 6 is also equal to 0. This is essentially two bits of information. g of 0 equals 0 and g of 6 also equals 0, which means g of 0 equals 6. So all three things are equal to each other, which is how it's been written. So g of 0 equals 0 tells us the graph goes through the point 0, 0. g of 6 equals 0 tells us the graph goes through the point 6, 0. So they're x-intercepts. Okay, so we've now got, if we think about, we know it goes through the origin and we know it goes through the point 6, 0. Okay, and so actually we also now know the x-coordinate of the turning point. We know the turning point is at 3, negative 3. So we've got more than enough information to find this equation. You could start with the x-intercepts, which would tell you that g of x is equal to a times x times x minus 6, and then you could substitute in the turning point to find the value of a, or you could start with turning point form and know that it's x minus 3 all squared minus 3 because of the turning point and then use either of the intercepts to find the value of a. Okay, Either are going to give, get you there. Um, let's maybe go with the turning point. Okay, So we know that g of 0 equals 0 which means that 
a times 0 minus 3 squared minus 3 is equal to 0. And so negative 3 all squared is 9, so this is 9a minus 3 equals 0, 9a equals 3, and so a equals 3 on 9, which is 1 third. And so therefore our equation, g of x, is equal to 1 third x minus 3 all squared minus 3. Again, if you had your um, equation in factorised form, you would have got a, an equation which was g of x equals 1 third x, x minus 6. And if you expanded that out, you would get 1 third x squared minus 2x. Okay. These are all perfectly valid answers to this question. They're all exactly the same equation. And they all are quadratic functions where g of 0 equals 0, g of 6 equals 0, and the smallest value of g, that is the y value of the turning point, is negative 3. Okay, let's have a look at the third and I think final, yes, final example. Um, write p of x, which is x squared minus 10x plus 32, in the form p of x equals x minus 5 plus k, and hence state the range of p. Okay, so we know that to get, this is a quadratic function, to get it from this form to this form, that happens by completing the square. Okay, so let's start with that. So we know that p of x is x squared minus 10x. Let's leave room to complete the square there, and plus 32. So if we want to complete the square, we're halving and squaring negative 10. Half of negative 10 is negative 5. Squared is plus 25. So we're adding and taking away 25 to create that perfect square. So we now have the perfect square is those first three terms, x squared minus 10x plus 25, which is x minus 5 all squared, which is um, we were actually given in the question. And then outside of that, we've now got minus 25 and plus 32. And so therefore we have plus 7. Okay, so it asks us, the first bit was to write p of x in that form. So we've done that. That's the first part. k is essentially 7. But again, answering the question. The question doesn't say find the value of k. The question says write p of x in this particular form. So we've done that. And hence, so you use this particular form to state the range of p. Okay, so p is a quadratic. It's a happy, if we draw it, it's a, a happy parabola. Um, and we've now discovered by writing it in turning point form that it has a turning point with coordinates of 5, 7. And so therefore, we know that the range, okay, so we know that the range of P is going to be from 7, including 7, to infinity. Okay, so this exercise is not a big exercise, 5F, it just includes some similar kind of problems making use of the function notation in solving questions that you're relatively familiar with already.